for this question, minimum cost to reach destination in time. We are given a graph looking something like this, for example. These blue numbers represent the fees. So if you start at node 0 and you want to get to node 5, we want to know what the min cost is to get from node 0 to node 5. And whenever we pass through a city, we have to pay these fees. So what path should I take to minimize the cost? Well, that's a simple Dijkstra's algorithm, but because it's a hard question, of course, they make it a little bit more difficult and they give you also these numbers on these edges, which represent the time it takes to get from one node to the other node. And these edges are underacted. So you're also given a max time. So you, you only want to consider all the paths where the time is less than or equal to the max time to get from node 0 to the last node. And out of all of those paths, return the, 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 the cost of the, min, the minimum cost of, the, of those. Right, so how do we do that? You can use, I'm not actually sure, there's, there's a few approaches, I've seen an approach that does just pure dextrous, where you just try to minimize not only the, the cost of the fees, but also the, the time at the same time. So you actually try to minimize two things at once. I haven't tried that yet, maybe next time. But there's also a, a DP approach that doesn't use Dijkstra's. Oh, I guess it is, uh, actually, I guess it kind of used Dijkstra's. But the way I did it, it did it in reverse. So we'll see. It doesn't really use Dijkstra's. In the sense that it uses a queue and just starts like sorting the queue and, and that. And then there's also an approach that does like DP and Dijkstra, which I actually don't know how it works. But I'll show you the one that does a top-down DP which I think is very neat. This is the neatest one I've seen. So it's basically, we start at the very last node, which in this case is node five. And we're also given, we also pass in the max time. So this little nugget represents a state. And this is the and this state should, which you can think of, uh, actually you can think of this as a function basically that returns the min the min cost given these parameters. So let's assume that to, but to be able to find this min cost, um, this node five has to ask its neighbors. So it has to ask node 2, um, what is your min cost for, uh, to get to you, given your max time is this minus 10. Why minus 10? Because it takes 10 to get from two, city 2 to city 5. And we also ask uh, node 4, how much time it takes to get to what the min cost to get to you is given that the max time is minus, max time minus 15. Now it could be possible that these nodes that is not possible to get to this node within this time in which case we also want to handle that case by returning like minus one or something like that and check that as an edge case Now this could take a very long time, so that's why we store all the answer to these values uh, in in a DP in a 2D DP array that has the, the node value and also the max time. Because, say for example, I go ask 
node 2 what um, so I query this from node 2 and at some point somewhere from another node that node may ask node 2 the same exact question in which case we would have to go through the entire process again and it, that will take too long so we want to cache those answers that's what we call DP and because it's top down in this solution I'm doing uh, it's memorization I'm doing top down in this case instead of bottom up which is what I actually is my go-to because there is a lot of pruning that can happen there's a lot of pruning that we can do bottom up is good in that it avoids using a stack the recursive stack but the um, it doesn't have much pruning at all it doesn't have pruning at all unless you I could actually add some logic in there to have some pruning but um, and if it are top down it's it looks simple and it does automatic pruning for you so let's try implement this okay but we have to do some pre-processing so this edges because they're bidirectional um, but they're not given as bidirectional it's like we also need an edge between 1 and 0 instead of 0 and 1 and so on so we have to store an adjacency list and let's just say that's going to be vec uh, no, an unordered map with ints and inside the vector of pairs why this because for each node we can store its a vector of its neighbors and also the cost as a second uh, parameter of this pair um, how long it takes to get to that that neighbor and this of course is the actual neighbor number itself so that's that we probably also need to store the DP and that can be a vector of vectors of ints And just so that I don't have to pass the passing fees into the, the recursive function, I could have an ints of fees. Okay, so let's just initialize all of these values. So the DP is a vector of vectors. Um, mm -hmm. And how many do we have? So we just look at the boundaries. Uh, we have up to a thousand nodes. So to include one thousand itself, because it's zero index, I have to have one thousand and one. Then vector of okay. This is the what I want to fill each value of the outer vector with. So I want to fill each value of the outer vector with vectors themselves. And each one has a thousand and one as well. So it's a 2D DP. And I don't want to initialize everything to minus one. All right. Also, fees. Fees, I just want to use these fees. And to avoid copying it, just for some a little bit more efficiency, I can move it instead. That means whatever is stored on the stack for the, for uh, whatever is stored in the heap for this is just transferred ownership to this handle instead of just copying it. All right, and then we also need adjacency, so I can loop through all the edges of edges. And for each of those, I want to push back to the adjacency list. So for say, let's take this one for example here. I want 
the JNCC list to have for node zero, node zero has a node uh, enable one. So that's why I'm going to have node zero here. It's going to have a neighbor of one. And the cost of going through neighbor one is E2. And repeat the same, but with the nodes reversed. And that's that. And then let's say we have a function because, uh, like I said, this can, you can think of this like a function returning the min cost. This is the state. I just call it find. And so that returns the min cost. For the state would we'll take in the node itself, just I say is n and a max time, which is max time. Okay, so this is a bunch of edge cases we need to consider here that we talked about. First of all, um, when you have a deep when a recursive algorithm, you always need a base case. Uh, but uh, and the also, also we also need to consider the fact that sometimes max time can go below zero, in which case we know it's impossible to get there. So if the max time is less than zero, then we probably need to return minus one, which minus one meaning that it's impossible to get to this node with this amount of time. And it also makes sense to use minus one because uh, if we need to return minus one overall, if you can't return uh, complete the entire problem within max time. So, else if uh, if you give if you have an answer, uh, if this state if this state is already calculated, then we don't really recalculate it. So we need to check if DP um, is not minus one. So minus one means it's uncalculated. So if dp of n and max time is not equal to minus one, then I want to return. Okay, so here is a little problem. What should we store for a DP value for a DP state if we already calculated it so it shouldn't be minus one but it's just still impossible to do it so we've already calculated but it's still impossible so we need to have another value other than minus one to represent it's impossible but calculated to be impossible so I can say if DPN is max time uh, is equal to int max. So we'll use int max as meaning that it's, it's calculated, but if it calculated it to be impossible. So then return, how do we return? Return uh, minus one. Otherwise, return the actual value. Okay. And our base case. So our base case is like we talked about we're going from the was asking the 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 last node here and then we're it's asking its other nodes and so on and so forth until we get to finally to the the first node what happens at the first node i don't want the first node to be asking its neighbors otherwise uh yeah there's no start it will just keep looping infinitely if there's no base case so Else if n is equal to zero, so the first node has index zero, then return the fee of zero. That's the base case. All right. And now we just need to go through and keep traffic costs. So initially you can initialize the cost of getting to this state to be int max. And then we can go through for each of the neighbors and check uh, what, what is actually the min cost. 
so that min cost would be the cost of this city, the current city, plus the min cost of its neighbor. Uh, plus the min cost of getting from node 0 to that neighbor, given that time. So, okay, for auto, uh, so for each pair we find in the JSONC, in the JSONC lists for the current node, we want to say, we first want to check if it's minus 1, because uh, that's an edge case, so into c is equal to find so the to access this pair because we're using a pair we do p dot first that's the node and the max time we consider is going to be max time so my max time minus the time it takes to get to this neighbor which is p dot second now, if c is equal to minus 1, uh, this is not equal to minus 1, then actually you want to consider this node in my calculation. So I want to say cost is equal to the min of what my cost is currently. Initially, it's int max, so it will be overwritten if this condition ever succeeds. And the second parameter would be C. Oh, plus my fee, plus the city's fee. So fees plus uh, N. Once, that's, once that is done, I want to return service. Okay, uh, I forgot the important step. It's DP. I need to cache this value of costs. So I need to say N in this state and uh, max time is equal to the cost which could be int max but here I'm making sure if it is int max I'm returning minus one here I want to say if cost is equal to int max return minus one otherwise return cost So I'm always making sure I never return uh, int max because uh, the reason for that is because C would be int max. This will be int max. If I add something to int max, that will cause an overflow and that's not good. And finally, we just want to return the find. This is the top. This is the top query, and we need to find. Uh, so the fees dot size minus one. So that's the number of the last node. That's the index of the last node, and I want to just pass it to the next time here. So let's give it a run. See if there's any errors. Uh, that should be auto. Push back, push back, push. I'm pushing back a pair, so I can initialize the pair using these. The initializer list like that. Okay, cool. Let's give that a run. I've done this question before. Great. Um, it's quite slow, so I'm thinking how I can use a Dijkstra's approach next time to so see if that improves it.